the meaning of Gethsemane is oil press. Where oil is pressed from olive. If this pressure comes on any believer, no matter how good he is, without preparation, he will be caught off guard. For Adam, or the first Adam, God was coming in the evening. But Adam did not engage that visitation to reveal that tendency. He did not engage that experience with God to let him know what is coming ahead. Well, we'll be talking for the next long number of weeks. <laughs> for the long number of weeks about what I've titled um, Effective Intercession Going Beyond the Surface. What many call intercession is actually, an intercessor is somebody who prays for long hours, who prays regularly, and prays for other people. Those, that's the definition of intercession as far as we are concerned. He prays regularly, he prays for long hours, possibly calls God by 150 names before he starts praying. Then he prays for other people. <laughs> but I dare say that intercession is a bigger thing than just those things I've mentioned. Let me tell you one of the reasons why this nation, Nigeria, has been moving in circles. You see that it's like God brings a breakthrough for us as a nation. Then we go back again. Then we need the same prayers within a circle of few years. The reason is that we have not been truly doing intercession as God expects. Listen to me. If it's by how much people pray, Nigeria cannot be where it is now. But the question is, are we praying right? Actually, intercession should be on behalf of the truth, not a person. There are many media of intercession that are available to us and the reason is that there are certain media of intercession that cannot work in such situations. It is now the wisdom of the intercessor to know the type or the level of intercession that will be sufficient for the situation that is at hand. So when we apply only one medium as the intercession rather than a medium of intercession, then what we do is that what happens is that we eat the target occasionally to come back again to the same spot, need the same intercession, and hit the target after a long time and come back again. So we have not been moving forward, we have been moving in circles. I said even Oxford Dictionary said it is pleading on somebody's behalf. But he went ahead and said other things. Oxford Dictionary also says that it is arbitrating. Arbitrating or mediating. When you are arbitrating, you are trying to make a judgment between two people. And one of the principles of an arbitrator is that it must be a third party that is unbiased. That is impartial. If an arbitrator is partial, it's not worth that title. Now, you cannot imagine two people disagree and you are just begging one. Please, don't be angry. Just don't be angry. Don't be, and you leave this other party. That's what we do that we call intercession. So, in other words, it's more or less like pinning the offender down and blackmailing him. That's what we do for God. That's what we do for God. That we call intercession. Pinning the offender down and blackmailing him on, into not doing anything about the wrong done. When you, when you intercede without keeping focus on God's justice, you are focusing only on God's mercy. You are actually condemning God. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of, of his throne. throne. Those are the two fulcrums on which intercession rotates. When you take either of them or the two of them out, what you, what you become is an intercessor, you become a prayer contractor. By the time we are focused on the convenience or just having the desire of the person we are trying to intercede for, we are already out of intercession. We have become a judge, we have become judges of God. 
that God is being unfair or that is too harsh. Okay, it's not, it's, I've done bad, but I, God, they come down now. What is it? What has he now done? That's what we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we go to Genesis 18, we are not reading. We will we'll do full uh, teaching on that. All right? Later. Uh, say Jesus of that later. Genesis 18, where Abraham was pleading yeah. for yeah. Lot. We talk a lot about that scripture. Intercession, have we? Okay. If you see 50, will you destroy it? I wanted to see justice. Those guys understood intercession more than us. If you see 50 people in that city, will you, will you, will you spare it? God said, no problem. Say, God, don't be angry. 45. Is it 40? He said, I will not destroy. Ah. Okay. 35. No. 30, I will not. Ah. 20, I will not. 10, I will not. And the Bible said, when he ceased talking, not that God did not allow him to continue. Abraham judged that if in a city you can't find 10, it's worth being destroyed. Want to learn from God's intercession? Did you hear me? From what? Oh, does God intercede? To who? That's why we know that intercession is not just a man thing. God intercedes. Intercession is intervention. Intervention is interruption. Hmm. <laughs> and that's what we don't want. That we actually intercede against God's intervention. Hmm. Many times. But because it's not favorable to us, we ask God to stop it. And we don't do... Yes. It appears not favorable to us. We now... We now Tell God to stop it. Alright? And we do nothing on this side to correct what God is trying to point attention to. Being a prayer warrior does not make you an intercessor. And I'm not saying it's wrong to be a prayer warrior. I don't have a problem with this. But I'm saying that being a prayer warrior does not qualify you as an intercessor. They are not the same things. A prayer warrior was with prayer. An intercessor intervenes when things are not the way God wants them to be. That's his job. When you are interceding, you are not part of the problem, but you bring yourself in so that that's why I say a lot we have to learn even from the Jewish saints because they were deep. Abraham asked God, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked. That's the powerful principle of intercession. When the righteous, who is not part of it, says, cast me among them, though my works are clean. God is with inhibits the hand of God from exercising his full fury, unleashing it upon the people. That's intercession. But it's a situation where we are just asking God, don't vex now. Don't vex. Ah, we have been begging you since now. God, don't be angry now. What is it safe? That's not intercession. Because, like I said, intercession is for the, for the, for the truth. As I've said, verse 16. We, we see, I think it's, it's that classic that brought it out. Because that is it's nuanced in all the other versions. But this one brought it out. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16. That is the sister scripture to this, Ezekiel 22, 30. We are coming back here. Yes. Okay, so I'm five classes. And he saw that there was no power and wondered that there was no intercessor. No one to intervene on behalf of truth and right. Did you hear that? Mm. On behalf of justice and, right. and righteousness. You got to know that the two issues are stick. Are we together? Those are the two issues at stake. Justice and righteousness. Truth and what you call it, and right. So, the intercession, the, the intervention is actually for truth, not to be trampled upon. But we think the people are the first. That was why Jesus did not stay in heaven and be begging God, please, let them come to heaven. Mm. 
he came to intercede on behalf of truth and justice. What is right is that a sinner must die and go to hell. That's the right just thing. That's justice. Is that okay? If they are not going to go, a price will be paid. Okay, instead of them going, I will go for them. That's inter that is intercession. And you can't go for them if you are also guilty. Do we understand what this is is now? So when the Bible says in Hebrews 7 25 that Jesus continually makes his accession for us, he's not begging God. People think Jesus is praying in heaven and begging the Father. He's just pointing to what he did on their behalf. Father, you remember I have stood for them. It's not that he's begging God, please don't kill. Ah, that one, ah, please. Leave me. He's not begging. The fact that they have paid that price, that price keeps speaking, even when it's quiet. So it is a form of intercession when you are standing in the place of truth and you are saying, this is how things ought to be. So it starts from the altar, not only in the private where we are praying. What do we preach? Do we preach righteousness? Do we preach justice? Do we live righteously? Do we live justly? The intervention we normally do that we call intervention, intercession is when things have already gone bad. And that shows, is, is, a, is a sign that the pulpit is not in the right place. Because it is the preaching of the truth that actually serve the work of preventive intersection. It's an intervention. You know that if these people don't do this, this will happen. So you already start telling them, warning them, and empowering them, not just talk. Don't fornicate, don't fornicate. Okay, if I feel like forgetting, what should I do? Those are the things that are missing in our preaching. All right? So we are not just telling them, we are empowering them. We are, we are el helping them to be able to live justly and righteously. Intercession starts with us. It is when we fail at the preventive that we need the remedia, which is the only one we know as intercession. Intercession is not only when things have gone wrong. Intercession is needed to prevent things from going wrong. Let's go. What is the need for God in your intercession? That's a critical question to ask. What is the need for God in your intercession? So God is not happy to destroy. Hello? He's not happy to destroy. You think it's your begging that makes him not to... No, 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 no. You don't even need to beg him. You don't need to beg him. Do the right thing. You don't need to beg God. That's why I keep telling people, God did not promise good roads in Nigeria. Hello? He did not promise good economy. He said, righteousness exalted the nation since he approached the people. As long as those things continue, the, look, we are just deceiving ourselves. The new Nigeria can only be based on righteousness and justice. That is why what God promised, you know, many people don't even know that the details of that prophecy. They think God promised that the economy will be buoyant. No. Those are fruits. Alright? You don't plant fruit. It's seed you plant. Praise God. And the seeds are righteousness and justice. He said your nation will become a nation of righteousness known all over the world. And people will hold you and say, please take us to Nigeria. We want to go and learn about God's righteousness. Not about how to make economy boom. Hello. The economy must boom. Hello. There must be infrastructure when there's justice and righteousness. If you go to the strong to the strong concordance, strong uh, strong the lexicon, it says one of the, one of the last things he says about the meaning of intercession is to deal with, hmm. to deal with, and intercession deals with the situation, not just facing God and be begging God. What am I doing about the situation in the land? What am I doing? What am I doing about the people who are up there who are being recruited every day into Boko Haram? Just because they are not in school? Just because there is no job for them to do? What am I doing? 
practical righteousness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Moses destroyed it. That was not sufficient. God did not stop his anger until this fiery intercession came up. And it was not long hard prayer. Let's listen. Exodus 32 25. Uh-huh. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp, camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come. You remember, his knee asked for who is on the people's side to come and beg God for them. This is intercession, brethren. Those people understood intercession. If it was to be us, we will need to be begging God. Oh God, these people have sinned. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Listen. Go ahead. Who is on the Lord's side? Uh-huh. Let him come unto me. And all the souls of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side. Come on. And go in and out from gate to gate through the camp. Uh-huh. And slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. <laughs> and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. That was the case of genuine intercession. An intercessor. God said he was looking for somebody to stand up for him, for the truth. Don't ever forget that in your intercession. In all your intercession, what is in it for God? He said, it's for me. He said, who is on the Lord's side? They came out. And they started executing judgment and justice then god showed up then mercy could not follow hello it was after this that you could not be praying god have imagine we should be killing people no what i'm saying is that you, in my language they said if your eye is producing pus you will remove it and show to the eye what you are doing is not good. Though. When you remove it, you look at it, you show it to the eyes. What you are doing is not good. If our intercession has not included that, we will continue on the journey of circles. But it's not God that forbid. I forbid it. That we continue intercession of God. Please, God, please. Because most of the time, it's a waste of time. We need to preach right. We need to live right. We need to pray right. Those dimensions are included in effective intercession. We know what is right. Let us do it. What is right now for us is not to kill people. It's to tell them the truth. Don't hide the truth because of that and offering. Don't tell the people because they have been made righteous. They, should, they don't have to live righteously. We were made righteous so that we can be empowered to live righteously. Practically. That is not where we are going to heaven. We are going to heaven because of God's righteousness. But here on earth, we are expected to live righteously. Hello? So that we will not misrepresent God and his kingdom, which is the kingdom of righteousness. So, what it starts from what we are preaching. And the correction should start from there too. That's my point. We cannot only be praying, God have mercy, I'm continuing to preach what led people to that place and expect God to hear that prayer. It's not possible. Until we accept that we are wrong, until we call for righteousness, we can enforce it, but we must call for it. From habit from the art of love. But the truth must be spoken in love. It must be spoken. Hallelujah. We cannot keep the truth away under our lips and be asking God under our same breath that he should bless us. We cannot continue in sin and say that grace should abound. God is a God of righteousness. He's a God of justice. Genesis 44 from verse 30. Yes. NLT. And now, my Lord, I cannot go back to my father without the boy. Because Joseph told them, no, I don't have a problem with you guys. 
you didn't take my cup. We have agreed that in whosoever bag I, I see my it. cup, I've that person I will, I will detain. So you guys, I don't, have, I don't have any problem with you. Go. I'll keep this guy. Hello? Mm. I'll keep this guy. You guys go. You have nothing. I don't have, I don't have anything with you. He was checking their heart whether they have changed. Mm. So, this is now Judah. Yes. Up. Remember, Ruben was there. Mm. Very quiet and humble. This was the crossing of leadership to Judah. Because he was, and it, it was an intercessor. Intercessors have a high place with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. My Lord, I cannot go back to my father <laughs> without the boy. Our father's life. Just put Judah, wherever Z, Judah put Jesus and mm. you. Hello? Mm. He did not start begging Joseph, please let's go with him. Leave him for us. Forgive him. This sin demands that somebody be detained. Take me instead. But this boy, let him go. That's intercession. That's not by silence. He was ready to forfeit his own righteousness to make this boy righteous. He was ready to forfeit his freedom to make this boy to be free. Hallelujah. We want to have it all. And God should just keep doing everything we want. Finish it up, please. Our father's life is bound up in the boy's life. He was concerned about the father. Mm -hmm. Jesus was concerned about, the, about God who created us for mm -hmm. himself, not for Satan. Mm -hmm. Yes. If he sees that the boy, the boy is not with us, uh -huh. our father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending that grieving white head man to his grave. Mm. My Lord, I guaranteed to my father that I will take care of the boy. I told him if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. I didn't say you should kill my sons. Mm. I am going to take personal responsibility. That's the shepherd's heart. So, so when you are hearing Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah. Now you can understand. Mm. Why Jesus did not come through Reuben. Mm. Now you can understand. Mm. I'm showing you the power of the ministry of intercession. But not the one we know. Go ahead. So please, my lord, mm. let me stay here as a slave. Come on. Instead of the boy. And let the boy return with his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. Jesus couldn't bear to see the father lose all of us. Mm. That's where the principle of imputation started from. Mm. Let them take my righteousness. You want them to die? What is death? Separation from you. As much as I love you and I love them, because I love you more than I love myself, let me be separated. Let them come. However, he pluralized his righteousness by laying his righteousness down. So at the end of the day, he remained righteous and we also became righteous. That's the whole principle of intercession. So when you begin to see that you are prayer pressing God and prayer pressing God and prayer pressing God and you are just prayer pressing him and you are not getting the result, you have to go and check whether you are doing the right thing. Possibly there is more to do than praying. Hallelujah. Because many times what we are praying about, they actually emerged as a result of our self-indulgences, as a result of our wanting our way at the expense of God's way. So when we are still on our way, we cannot reverse what we enter into because we went our way and be asking God to bless our mess. There is preventive intercession. Intercession that prevents the cutting off from God. You know, as, like I said in the previous episodes, that as an intercessor, your role is just like those Old Testament priests. You communicate to God for men and you also must receive from God for men. We stop at just communication. We don't care what God wants to say. We just want what we are, what we want. God, this person must not die. All right? And we pray, 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 pray. And when he's alive, and when he, when, when he doesn't die, we go and give thanks. And at the end of the day, the life that that person has added to him is, becomes a liability to God, to man, and to everybody. 
We don't care about the will of God. You are a prayer contractor, not a an intercessor. If all you are interested in is what the person that wants you to pray for him wants, you don't care about the will of God. This person wants to go to America. God let him just have visa and go to I mean, even if going to America will destroy his destiny and his eternity. It doesn't matter. You are not a, an intercessor. You are a prayer contractor. Praise God. <laughs> so, we have to begin to check ourselves. We may be sincere in all of these things. But the Bible says it's time of ignorance. God wings us. But now it's calling every man on the repentance. The meaning of Gethsemane is oil pressed. Where oil is pressed from olive. If this pressure comes on any believer, no matter how good he is, without preparation, he will be caught off guard. For Adam, or the first Adam, God was coming in the evening. But Adam did not engage that visitation to reveal that tendency. He did not engage that experience with God to let him know what is coming ahead. 